This screencast is an exercise on how to compare the characteristics of monopolies and perfectly competitive firms, all on one graph, the monopoly graph. You're going to need a piece of paper and a pencil. There's going to be eight steps. And after each step is introduced, pause the screencast and execute it on your paper. Then hit the play button and check your answer. In addition to checking your answer, listen to the explanations or rationales. These are important to know, especially for FRQs. It also may be helpful to listen to each step twice. Step one, draw and label the axes of a monopoly graph. The horizontal axes for a monopoly graph or really any of the firm graphs is going to be quantity. The vertical axis is price with cost in parentheses. It's really important to have the proper labeling because if you don't on an FRQ, you will be marked down. And so price with cost in parentheses is accepted by the AP board. Step two, draw and label the marginal revenue, demand, average revenue, and price curves for the monopoly graph. A monopoly is a price maker, and so therefore they have a downward sloping demand curve. The demand is equal to average revenue, which is equal to price. The marginal revenue curve is less than the demand curve. This is because for each additional unit that is produced, not just the next unit, but all previous units have to be lower in price. And so therefore, your marginal revenue is less than your demand. Step three, draw and label the marginal cost and the average total cost curves. Your marginal cost curve looks like the Nike swoosh. It first has the increasing returns as it's coming down, and then you have the diminishing returns going up. Your ATC is U-shaped with minimum ATC being at the intersection of the marginal cost curve. One of the things, I did this on the PowerPoint using the tools, so it's not perfect, but one of the things that I think is helpful is that I start drawing my ATC where it would hit the marginal cost curve, and then I just go um, with each side going that way to show that this is the minimum part. Because you will be marked down on an FRQ if you do not have ATC at its minimum. Step four, label the quantity and the price for the monopoly. The profit maximizing output formula is MR equals MC. This is used for any of the firms. And so at MR equals MC, that gives you the quantity. You take it up to the demand curve, and this gives you the price for the monopoly. Step five, add the perfectly competitive firm's demand curve to your monopoly graph. One of the things to remember here is that the perfectly competitive firm is a price taker and they take the price from the industry. When you're looking at the monopoly graph, the reason that we can use it is because the monopoly is the only firm, so they are the industry. A monopolist controls the supply, and so as a result, the marginal cost curve is the supply curve for the industry. And so the intersection of supply and demand gives you that price that would be taken by the perfectly competitive firm. And so that's what you can use when you are drawing Mr. Dark. The other way to verify that this is correct is that not, they're the price takers from the industry, which is that intersection of supply and demand, which is marginal cost. But a perfectly competitive firm is always allocatively efficient. And the formula for that is price equals marginal cost. And so this intersection here also is the allocatively efficient point. They're perfectly elastic, and so again, Mr. Darp is a straight line that's coming off at this point here and giving us um, marginal revenue equals demand equals average revenue and price, and then you have a quantity. Please note that a perfectly competitive firm always charges a lower price, and they always produce more. Step six. Shade in consumer surplus on the monopoly graph. 
what's important here when you're doing this is that you are defining what consumer surplus is. Remember that consumer surplus is the benefit that consumers receive for participating in the market. It is found by looking below the demand curve and above the price that the monopoly is charging. And so when you're looking at the consumer surplus, it's this blue triangle here. Shade the consumer surplus for the perfectly competitive firm. Because the perfectly competitive firm charges a lower price and has a larger output, the consumer surplus is not only that of what the monopoly was, but it's also this extra amount here. So the takeaway from this is that consumer surplus for a perfectly competitive firm is larger than the consumer surplus with a monopoly. Step 8. Shade the deadweight loss of a monopoly compared to a perfectly competitive firm. Again, I think it's important when we're talking about deadweight loss that we define it before we find it so that way you're able to um, properly locate it. When we're talking about deadweight loss, it's the loss of consumer and producer surplus because you are no longer producing at the allocatively efficient point. So when we look here at the perfectly competitive firm, allocative efficiency is at this quantity here. They do not have dead weight loss. A perfectly competitive firm is always allocatively efficient, and so they're always producing that right mix of goods. The monopoly, on the other hand, has a lower quantity. And so the distance between the monopoly quantity and the perfectly competitive quantity helps us to create this triangle here of the loss of consumer surplus and also producer surplus because you're not at the allocatively efficient point anymore. The producer surplus, just as a side note, is created because, the, again, that marginal cost curve is the supply curve for the monopoly. So if we're really looking at where producer surplus is, that is below the price and above the supply curve. And so that's how you can find that on the graph. So just to go over the different things that we looked at, when we're talking about a monopoly compared to a perfectly competitive, the perfectly competitive will always charge a lower price and they always will produce more. When we're looking at the consumer surplus, the consumer surplus is larger for the perfectly competitive than it is for the monopoly. When we're talking about the deadweight loss, a perfectly competitive firm does not have deadweight loss whereas the monopoly has a deadweight loss because they are not producing at that allocatively efficient amount, so they have a loss of consumer and producer surplus um, there.